toy soldiers, not as chess pieces. And my dad, when I was seven or eight, said, would you actually like to learn how to play the game of chess? And I said, yes, that would be wonderful. And so he taught me how to play chess, and my dad, like my wife, Jennifer, never went easy on me. Jennifer doesn't let the kids win games. <laughs> my dad didn't let me win games. And, and so we would play chess, and I lost. I have never won a game of chess against my dad. And I would lose time and time again. And I remember I, I finished the game, and I was maybe 14 by this time, and, and I said, I almost had your queen. And he said, that doesn't matter, because you're supposed to try to get the king. The king should be your sole focus. Why are you making all these strategies to get parts that don't matter? And that has stuck with me. The king should be your sole focus. Still not a very good chess player. I've learned to focus, to make the main thing the main thing. The king should be our focus. Our king is Jesus. Our king, our Lord, our Savior, should be at the heart of everything we do. And if he's not at the heart of what we're doing, if Jesus is not at the center of it, if he is not the reason for it, then we have strayed off course. The short and condensed version of Paul's letter this morning is, Do not make yourselves a stumbling block for new believers. Do not make yourself a scandal to new believers. And so if a new believer sees you eating in the temple of Jupiter, the new <laughs> believer is going to think, well, Jupiter... Uh, is just as powerful as Jesus, because I saw old Joe, who's been a believer for a long time, eating in that temple. And, and so clearly it's okay to eat meat sacrificed to idols. And what Paul is saying is, no, don't. He said the meat is not the issue. The issue is you causing somebody to stumble. The issue is you not being a good example. Celeste and I were ordained to the diaconate when I was ordained to the priesthood. We were both asked if we would be morally upstanding citizens in the church and in the world. And I can't speak for Celeste, but I crossed my fingers and said yes. <laughs> not really, I did not cross my fingers. What's unfair in, in the ordination vows is they also ask that the family members be morally and upright standing citizens in the world, that they also reflect the light of Christ. I say that's unfair because I am going to have to send Archie off to school in Switzerland. <laughs> and I could do a whole thing about Archie and demon possession, but we'll do that another Sunday. We're not supposed to be stumbling blocks. We're supposed to be good examples, as best we can. But when I was first ordained, I wanted to be the priest who was just like everybody else. I wanted to be a regular guy. And so I would, I would, act, I would go to parties, and I would do what everybody else at the party was doing, which is not a wise idea, especially on a Saturday night. And I quickly grew out of that. One, because Sunday mornings were becoming very difficult. And two, the priest is not a regular guy. We're not regular people. We're not better than other people, but we're not regular people. Regular people don't say to themselves, I think God is calling me to proclaim the word to people in this world. I think God is calling me to, to make people angry. That's, that's not my call. My call is to tell you how much Jesus loves you. I leave it to others to say how we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So I wear all this in order that I might not be a stumbling block. It also quickly identifies me as the priest. Nobody else is in the congregation wearing this get-up. 
You walk in and you see the person standing here and this, you're like, that person's the priest. But if I dressed as I wanted to dress, as I often dress during the week, in blue jeans and tennis shoes and a flannel shirt, somebody walking in might say, well, who's that guy? And why is he talking? So this is a very good identifier. It identifies me as priest. I'm not a stumbling block. Last week I was asked, last week I was asked, on what side do we carry the bread and what side do we carry the wine when we come forward with the gifts of God? The person was told, you carry the bread on the left side. And she was told this by somebody with a lot of experience in the church. And somebody else with some experience in the church said, you carry the bread on the right side. And she said, which is it? Go with the person who's going to frown the most if you do it on the wrong side. <laughs> that is always my answer. We have so many rules and, and unwritten rules in the church. How we're supposed to light the candles. How we're supposed to carry things. How I'm supposed to hold my hands. What I'm supposed to wear. When we're supposed to speak. We get up on our high horse and talk about how evangelicals and, and non-denominational Christians. It's all about the show with their rock music and their smoke and their lights. Sisters and brothers, this is absolutely a show. You have your script in front of you. You have. If I stop during the Eucharist and say, hold on, I forgot an announcement. So many frowns. And not a few emails to follow. The senior warden will hear far more about it than I will. But it's a show. And it's okay that it's a show. Because the whole point of this show, of this drama, is for Jesus to be revealed. All of this is to point to Jesus. All of this is meant for us to see and to feel and to know that we are loved, that we are wanted, that we are forgiven. The lights, the cross, the choir, the reading, all of this is meant for us to see Jesus more clearly. And as soon as any of it begins to take away from Jesus, it's become a stumbling block. Or in the original Greek, a scandal. The Greek word for stumbling block is scandalon. You don't want to be a scandal to anybody. Last week, we had our diocesan clergy meeting over Zoom, where the bishop meets with all the clergy who are available at 2.30 on a Thursday. And Jesus was mentioned in the prayer at the beginning and in the prayer at the end, and in between, I didn't hear anything about Jesus. I heard about the first woman ordained in the Anglican Communion. I heard about a bishop. I heard about Chinese New Year, February 11th, you are invited to Chinese New Year at the diocese, a 15-course meal for free. We talked about that at length. We didn't talk about Jesus. A whole pile of priests and bishops and deacons. We weren't talking about Jesus. Jesus should be at the center of everything we do. And if Jesus is not at the center, we need to ask ourselves why we're doing it. Why does this matter? Why is this important? What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? The unclean spirit comes forth because the unclean spirit is certain that Jesus is there to destroy it. Have you come to destroy us? But 
When we ask, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Most of us are not worried that he has come to destroy us. How often are we asking, what have you to do with me, Jesus? How many of us are asking, what have I to do with you, Jesus? How many of us are going to Christ and saying, I want to do your will in this world? But it is so hard. How many of us are going to Christ and saying, I love you love who you are and I want to be your follower but people are awful I don't know if I can do this we ask a lot of Jesus but how often are we asking Jesus what we can do for him what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? What have you to do with us? With me? We need to be able to ask Jesus. What is my role? What is my call? Who am I to be? And in the midst of all the things happening in our world, in the church, in our community, at home, it helps for us to step back and say, where is Jesus in the midst of all of this? Where is Jesus in the midst of this pain? Where is Jesus in the midst of this disagreement? Where is Jesus in the midst of this joy? Our focus should always be on the King. Our focus should always be on Christ. On His love for us. His call to us. His promise to us that we are redeemed. That we are saved. Because as soon as we lose focus, we start to get into trouble. It doesn't matter which side the bread is on. <clears throat> Pick the side that's not going to make somebody angry. And keep Jesus at the center of our life.